guys, today we got one, two, three, four in my books. And we going to read some of this. And because I like that book, so we just going to have a fun day. Books are fun to read. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Good evening, everyone. So, Good evening, everyone. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start our going to bed routine. So, what did you do before going to bed, Saira? Brush. What? Brush my teeth. Okay, you brush your teeth. And then, oops, did you go to the toilet? Okay, good job. Okay, so today we're going to read four books about Emma the Wiggles. Um, yeah, and also a Lego book. Okay, so Saira, can you spell this with me? A L L A B O U T E M M A. Okay, it's it reads O. Good job, this one. S T O R Y B O O K. Story book. Well done. So we're going to get to know Emma the Wiggles better. I do. Ah. You find it. You okay. You read the only Okay. All right. Okay. This book belongs to me. Look. Hmm. Is this my name? Hmm. Okay. Meet Emma. Emma is the yellow wiggle. Hello, friends. Okay. So, what color? Is Emma's dress shirt? The shirt is yellow, and the skirt is black yellow. Okay, it's black and yellow. Good job. Next, her favorite color is. Can you guess? Yellow. She wears a yellow bow in her hair. Beautiful, beautiful. Emma loves to do the groovy twist. Can you do the twist? Yes. I can. She is the driver of the big red car. Toot toot! Oh! Who are on the car? Uh, who are they? They're all the... Wiggles. The Wiggles. <laughs> She also has a car of her own called the Boca. Mobile. <laughs> so she loves everything that is yellow. Mm. And that the, has, has a bowl on it. <laughs> Emma loves visiting the zoo. park. <laughs> That's not a zoo, it's the park. Oh, look at Lelo. Lelo, Lelo, Lelo. Lelo, Lelo. Yeah. At least the sun is yellow. Lelo. Many objects are yellow, right? And the sun. What is Emma looking at? Um, what is she looking at? The swan. She's looking at the swan a swimming goose. in the pond. Okay. Or a goose. Or a goose, yes. She has glasses that help her see. Hmm. Do you need glasses to see? No. Okay. Do you have friends who need glasses to see? Yes. Okay, 
So, what what should we do in order not to wear glasses? Don't watch too much. Don't watch what? Videos. <laughs> okay. They are good for you. <laughs> but if your eyes, you know, if there's something wrong with your eyes, it's okay. You can always wear eyeglasses, right? There's nothing wrong with it. But if you can avoid, if you can prevent it, then that's better, right? Yeah, and also when you, also when you, some people were born blind yeah. or with no eyes. Or with impaired vision, right? Okay. Yeah, that, hmm. She likes to visit her friend. What's her friend's name? Dor Dorothy. Or Dor Rosie T. Oh, that rhymes. Dorothy, Rosie T. But most of all, Emma's favorite thing to do is what? Can you guess, Sarah? Dance. Dance. Dance shoes. Let's dance. Oh yeah, that's. What kind of dance does she do? Do you think? Uh, ballerina. Yeah, she's she's a ballerina, so she's doing ballet. Ballet. Goodbye, Emma. Goodbye. All right. So we've got to know Emma a little bit better. Okay. Which next book? Which one do you want to read, Sarah? Mm. Uh, mystery mm. shoes mm. or mystery shoes? Okay. <laughs> and then after this, we'll read your ninja go. Okay. Mm. Let's fix this camera. All right. Emma and the Mystery Sh Shoes Storybook hmm. By Emma Why are they called Mystery Shoes? Emma doesn't know what to do with the shoes Alright, let's see Oh, let's this see. book belongs to? Me <laughs> okay. who's, who's the little Who's the youngest of Because all? Kakang doesn't like Emma's Doesn't really like Emma's books, right? It's, Emma, Emma. it's a bit too girly, right? Yeah. Okay, for you but you do read it, right? Okay. Emma has just received a gift. She opens it up and finds a pair of new shoes. Ooh. Who likes getting gifts? Emma. Emma. What about you? Do you like getting gifts? Receiving mm, gifts? Yes, but I don't get gifts here. Well, I always gift, gift you a lot of things. Like today, what did I give you? A drawing book. Yeah, and... And me, I have a lot of things. I have a war gun, an X shot gun, and I have an Oregon in a book. See, I gifted you a lot of things. <laughs> what could Emma do with such a special pair of shoes? I know, says Emma. She wiggles her fingers in delight. I could... What could she do with the shoes, Saira? Mm, Bridge walking. Go fishing! Emma packs up a fishing rod, puts on her new shoes, and goes to the river. But the shoes go clickety clack over the bridge and scare away all the fish. Hmm. So. Look, this up here, this rainbow. Yeah. Are the fish? Are the shoes good for fishing? Okay. That's for dancing ballet. <laughs> hmm. Says Emma. These shoes are not for fishing. What else could I do in these shoes? Emma leaps with excitement. I know. I could... I'm looking at the fish. <laughs> what could she do, Saira? Jump. With the grief. Go horse riding. Emma trots around the park. But her shoe bows... But her, sh her shoe bows, right? Is it bow or bow? Bow. Okay. But her shoe bows keep getting caught in the stirrups. These shoes are not for horse riding. Hmm. Emma thinks about what else she could do in the shoes. Aha! She says, striking a pose. I could... Go bushwalking! Emma heads off into the trees. It's a beautiful sunny day. Her new shoes sparkle so much in the sunlight that she can see. These shoes aren't for bushwalking. Hmm. The shoes are too bright. 
Emma tries all sorts of things in her new shoes. She tries playing dress-ups, see, painting, playing in the garden, and playing statues. But nothing seems right. Hmm. Emma doesn't know what to do with these shoes. She goes back to her bow room to put them away. In her room, Emma's shoes go clickety clack, clickety clack, and she gets an idea. Hmm. What's her idea? Do you think? Ballet. Ballet. Of course, these shoes are perfect for a tap dance, not a ballet. It's a tap dance. Tap dance is like you tap your knees like this, and you, it makes a sound. You mean your feet? Yes, like this. It has to have sounds like this. Yeah, and so you need special shoes, right, yes. to make beautiful sound, and the shoes are just right. Now we solved the mystery, right? So, are they still mystery shoes? No. Because now we know what these shoes are for, right? What are they for? Tap dance. Okay, good job. All right, next, if you guys are uh, sleepy, just go sleep, okay? I will keep reading. I'm not going to ask any more questions because you might be sleepy. The next story is Emma's is new glasses storybook. Because I don't like questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Emma loves to read. On Monday, Emma tries to read a book, but the words look blurry. Emma can't make them out. She will have to find something else to do. Hmm. Is it, is it true? Yep. On Tuesday, Emma tries to play the drums, but the notes on her sheet music seem to move around. Mm -mm, that's not good, right? Because you need your note. What, what do you call it? Musical note, right? On Wednesday, Emma has tea party with Teddy Bear. She tries to pour him tea, but she misses his cup. Oh dear. Oh dear. On Thursday, Emma visits the petting zoo. She cuddles with a tiny calf, but it bleeds instead of moves. How strange. Well, that's not exactly a cow, right? It's a... what is it? I I think it's a goat. On Friday, Emma mistakes Prince Curly Locks for Lachi. Oh dear, says Emma. Sorry, Prince Curly Locks. Everything just looks so blurry. Perhaps you need to see an eye doctor, says Prince Curly Locks. An optometrist. Mm, now you know what an eye doctor is called. Optometrist. It's even shorter for an eye doctor. Yeah. On Saturday, Emma goes to the optometrist. He does some tests and gives Emma a pair of beautiful glasses. Oh, as usual, the glasses got yellow bows on And them. even the window. <laughs> on Sunday, Emma puts her glasses on. She can see clearly at last. Emma is so happy that she can read once more. She reads while Highland dancing. Ooh, nice. She reads while dancing ballet. She reads and reads and reads all day. Oh, she loves reading. Just like two people I know. <laughs> she even reads while I'm dancing. Yippee! I can see clearly now I have my glasses on, says Emma. And then she reads some more. Just like us, we're going to read some more. This is the next one. Oops. Cinder Emma Storybook. Mm, this time Emma becomes Cinderella. No, it's Cinder Emma. 
Instead of Cinderella, it's Cinderella. Because she is Emma. Because she's Emma, not Cinderella. Not Ella. Ella. If she's Ella, she, her name will be Cinderella, and then, <laughs> but she's Emma. Then her name will be Cinder Saira. Or Cinder Nadifa. Well, Saira is sleeping already. That's so cute. Yep. Once upon a time, there was a warm hearted girl called Cinder Emma. She worked all day, keeping the house neat and tidy, with a little help from her garden friends. Cinder Emma had two unkind sisters called Fiona and Fortin. They never helped Cinder Emma with the chores and did not like her garden friends. One day, the three sisters were invited to Prince Curly Lock's royal ball, but Fiona and Forte ripped up Cinder Emma's invitation so she couldn't go. Uh -oh. On the night of the ball, Cinder Emma's rock and roll fairy godfather appeared. He waved his magic guitar and transformed Cinder Emma's rags into a beautiful gown and a sparkling pair of shoes. Look, it's not fairy godmother, but it's fairy godfather with a guitar. Just remember to be home by midnight said the rock and roll fairy godfather as he handed Cinder Emma a new invitation to Prince Curly Lock's royal ball. Does he have an air and then Curly Lock's <laughs> invitation? <laughs> I guess so. At the royal ball, Prince Curly Lock's hoped to meet his one true love. He saw a beautiful maiden in the crowd. It was Cinder Emma. The pair danced and talked together for hours until... Big Night Slot strikes. Cinder Emma realized it was almost midnight. She dashed away, leaving one sparkly shoe behind in her haste. The next day, Prince Curly Lock searched everywhere until he found Cinder Emma, his one true love. He slipped the sparkly shoe onto her foot and asked, Will you marry me? No. <laughs> I want to look at you. Yes, said Cinder Emma. So Prince Curly Locks and Cinder Emma were married and lived happily ever after. after. It's always happily ever after and sometimes bad things. Mm, yeah. It's like uh, typical of fairy tale, right? Yeah. To have a happily ever after ending. Do you think life always uh, has a happily ever after ending? Some t some life doesn't. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. What do you th What do you consider not so happily ever after ending? Like a story. I made this one up. Mm. So it sure. was so the, mm -hmm. so it was happy at first and then very sad at the end. All right, now give me your book. I'll read your book. What is it? Okay, I think I. Oh. Is it? Me? Is it? I gave it to you. I think you gave it to me. Okay. Yeah. Can you close the door, please? Okay. No, I only have the giants. Okay. Do you want me to read the giants? You don't have to if you're tired. I can read it. God's dream. All right. Okay. The giant diary. The giant's diary. I think it's a long book, right? It's long. It's not. Written by Jack Hastings, illustrated by Steve Axelson. It's a little bit. Let's start the book. The giant story. Sunday. Hi. My name is Hugo Grant, and I'm a giant. My wife is a giant too. People think 
that giants are fierce and that they love stomping around and eating people. But I'm not interested in eating anyone. And when you're as big as I am, you can't help stomping just a little bit. I'd love to find some friends, but people run away screaming when they see me. No one comes to visit. Life is hard for giants. Monday Today, some strange things happened. At lunchtime, I could smell a small boy. I think he's been here before, but I've never seen him. I hoped he might have come around to make friends. I played the fee fee fo fum game that I used to play with my father when I was little. But the boy must have been hiding and he didn't come out. I asked my magic harp to play and my goose to lay a golden egg. But the boy still didn't appear and my harp played so softly and beautifully that I fell asleep. Suddenly, a dreadful noise woke me up. My goose was very upset and squawking loudly. The harp was shouting my name. All at once, I saw a small boy running out the door with my magic harp under one arm and my goose under the other. I couldn't believe it. Do you know who the boy is? Jack. So this is, hmm, we'll talk about it later, okay? It's a different, it's mm -hmm. a different story from Jack and Gisto, so it's just a giant's way. Okay, so now we're listening to the giant side of the story, right? Yeah. Is it a different side of story from the Jack side? Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about that more, okay? I ran after him, but I tripped over my shoelace and he got a good head start. He ran all the way to the top of the beanstalk that grew from his garden on the ground up to my house in the clouds. He had reached the ground and chopped down the beanstalk before I even got to the top. I suppose he didn't want to be my friend after all. I don't even have any... I don't even have my goose or my harp to play with. Now I'm lonely and bored. Oh. So what did Jack do? Steal. He stole the goose and the harp? So is Jack a good or a bad boy? I don't know. Tuesday. I had nothing else to do, so I spent all morning watching the boy way down there on the ground. He built a lovely house for my goose and asked my magic harp to play for his mother. She looked very happy. They must be very poor, their house is tiny, they don't have any animals, not even a cow. I wonder where they find money for food. Wednesday. This morning, the boy took some golden eggs to sell at the market and came home with a cow and a big basket of food. His mother was so excited that she danced around and around the house. Then they ate a big lunch. Now I think I know why the boy stole my harp and my goose. But I still miss them. Is he a bad giant? No. Why do you think he's not a bad giant? He has only some friends. Huh. The end. Thursday. I have decided what to do. I've built an enormous ladder. I'm going to climb down to the ground and talk things over with the boy and his mother. Maybe we can share the golden eggs. Maybe we can all listen to the harp together. Monday. It's Friday, Friday. <laughs> okay, it's Friday. 
This morning, when I climbed down my ladder, the goose came running towards me and the harp played excitedly. But the boy and his mother screamed and ran inside. I peeped at them through the window and said, Don't be frightened, I just want to make friends. I tried to speak softly so my big voice wouldn't scare them. They came slowly out of the house. The boy said, Can you read the boy's part? Okay, the boy, the boy said, Hello, I'm Jack. This is my mother. He looked sad and worried. Please don't be angry, he said. I know it was wrong to steal your goose and your heart. I took them because we are very friends, very humble. I'm not angry, I said. I'm just lonely and bored. My name is Hugo. It's nice to meet you. Don't you see the pun in his name? Hugo. Hugo for? Huge. <laughs> Look. <laughs> the eye is like the, it's like the size of the lat of our lamb. Yeah. What a polite giant, said Jack's mother. Would you like a cup of tea? Yes, please, I said. I'd love a cup of tea. <laughs> it will be so funny, right? Look, it's too small. <laughs> how, how would he even drink it? He'll feel like nothing at all. I guess so. After morning tea, I helped Jack collect some firewood. I walked on tiptoe so that the ground wouldn't shake. We fixed a hole in the roof of the house. I helped his mother in the garden. I was careful not to step on her vegetables. I learned how to milk the cow. We talked about lots of things and had a wonderful time. Hmm, look, what is the giant doing? <laughs> Touching his It's He's milking the cow. And, the, and Jack thinks that it's too tall for him to get the milk. <laughs> yeah. So the giant had to lift the cow to milk to milk it, right? <laughs> Next weekend, Jack and his mother are going to come and stay with me and meet my wife. We're going to share the goose and the harp. Life is good for some giants, don't you think? Oh, that's a happy ending. I thought he would be really angry and take back the harp and the goose. But anyways, it's here. Yeah, and I think... Okay, my turn to Okay. What dream? Come. I'll show. Okay. What dream? Bye. Welcome. Johnny Cole? Joanne Cole. Yeah. Okay. Sleep. Is sleep. yours? Are you sleepy? No. Not almost. Yes. Okay. What's you? Here. Here's Bud in bed. He's, he's having a lovely dream. In the dream, he's eating a lot full of strawberry and cream. Strawberries and cream. Yep. Good job. Next morning, he can think of nothing but strawberries and cream. When he goes out, he's still in a dream, stops up, and doesn't look where he's going. On comes Frank the postman with a letter for a bus. Morning, bud, says Frank. But Bud doesn't see or see him. Such in a daydream, but the stars, he wouldn't have noticed if he ever had seen the postman. That's funny. That's funny, says Frank. What can? What's he thinking about? 
I am so curious to know that she can't help following him. They passed Palmer Harley Moore on his chapter. Morning, says Harley Moore. But they walk without answer. They walk by without answer. Okay. Yep. Well, so really dainty. About strawberries and friends, so be thinking about what or can be thinking about. <laughs> they wouldn't work, they wouldn't notice. They wouldn't have noticed if Farmer Bodyman had been a scarecrow. Scarecrow, yes. Yeah. Wonder and full of wonder, he follows them. Soon they came to Aunt Flo. Good morning, everybody, says Aunt Flo. But they are all busy. They are all so busy. They are all possibly that they walk past without answering her. They wouldn't, notice they wouldn't have noticed, noticed her. her if she had been standing on her head. What can they be up to? says Aunt Flo. And lost in thought, she pulls in. By and by, they came to a hole in the ground. They come to a hole mm -hmm. in the ground. What does it see? It is king of strawberries. Walk straight into the corner to be fresh and free. You have to pause. Frank is so busy thinking, busy. thinking about what food can be thinking about. Okay, you're so sleepy. That's good. Shall I continue? Yes. That he doesn't even notice that Bod has disappeared. He too walks into the hallway. And Barley Mo is so busy thinking about what Bod and Frank can be thinking about that he doesn't see the hole either, nor does Aunt Flo. Then comes, then along comes PC Copper. He sees the hole. That's a dangerous hole, he says. Someone might fall down it. And can I come back up? Yeah. So he puts up signs saying, stop, danger, danger, and directs people away from the hall. Suddenly, he hears voices coming from the hall. Hello? Hello? He says, shining his torch. Anybody down there? Yes, says Bod. And guess what we found down here? I give up, says PC Copper. What does that mean? I give up, yes. I don't know. You tell me. An enormous bowl of strawberries and cream, just like I dreamt about. Come and join us. Strawberries and cream? <laughs> cream and strawberries. I don't even like cream and strawberries. <laughs> Can't eat on duty, says PC Copper. Save me a strawberry for later. When they came up, when they come up, Bud says goodbye to his friends and gives PC Copper his strawberry. Pop it under my helmet, says PC Copper. Then Bud walks away, walks off in another happy dream. The end. The end. And now you and Saira are going to walk into the dream. happy dream. Okay, I think that's all for tonight. Let's go to bed. Don't forget to say your prayers. Assalamualaikum. What's the prayer? Well done. Good evening, everyone. Good night. <laughs> Not good evening anymore. Eh? Good night, everyone. Assalamualaikum.